So in this poem, we see the perspectival point of uh, point of view of the fisher woman, and Patrick Bonanno is narrating it through uh, the first hand point of view of the fisher woman. Right. So she's talking about the past when the fisher man or her husband was not quite thirty, and his son, uh, and son had not turned you into old world brown. Right. So when he was young, uh, she's talking about the time he was young where uh, he he hasn't grown embittered like the rest, where he hasn't grown bitter, resentful, developing a jaded or disillusioned outlook of life like the rest of the fishermen, um, where they have, where the rest of the fishermen who have been embittered, who have been exposed to all these experiences with death, have become fixated and obsessed with death because the life of the fishermen, according to Fernando, and as it is in reality, it's a very unpredictable life, right? Considering that it is always involved, it always involves a battle of the sea, and sea is very unpredictable. So where the fisher folk have to battle with the uncertainties of life. So, so when uh, the fisherwoman is narrating about the past, she starts with the past where the fisherman has not yet become embittered, bitter, jaded, uh, or disillusioned with life like the rest of the fishermen, right? Caught in continents upon continents upon the sea. So continents means a self-restraint, right? So this can particularly be with regard to his sexual continents as well, because the immediate next line is uh, chased as a gull flying pointed form in haste to be with me, right? So when he is hot with the self-restraint, he may be sexual continence. He wants to come back home as soon as possible uh, in order to be his wife, right? So here you see chased as a gull pointed form. Uh, there we see the literary device or literary technique of a simile being incorporated. So whenever we see the words as or like a, uh, and there is a comparison being made, that is when we can detect a simile used in a literary work, right? So he comes home, uh, chased as a seagull, uh, pointed for, right, in his to be his wife. And here, even with the relation to uh, these bird imagery, as well as other natural images, we can even say that these are examples of uh, pathetic fallacy incorporated in Patrick Fernando's work, right? And this bird imagery is very crucial in Fernando's poetry. Uh, particularly when it comes to the birds in the coastal area, we can see that they have been deliberately incorporated uh, in order to make, uh, in order to make his point, right? So here we see like the reference to the gull, and uh, there are two poems I have included in this section, which is about the life and death of a hawk, and uh, I think it's just one poem, right? So here you have a poem about a hawk, the life and death of a hawk. And even in The Fisherman Mourned by His Wife, there are several, uh, there are several references uh, to natural phenomena and natural imagery, particularly, and this particularly includes bird imagery and particularly birds in the coastal area, right? Okay, coming back to the second stanza now. Um, so he says, now that being dead, you are beyond detection and need not be discreet. Let us confess it was not love that married us, no affection. So according to Patrick Fernando, these are the reasons Fisher folk marry, right? Uh, because of elders' persuasion, not even loneliness. So he is not uh, a, mutually, uh, a mutual union at first, right? Because they did not fall in love and get married but it was predominantly due to elders' persuasion, right? So in the next few lines, when he says, uh, recall how you first were so impatient and afraid, my eyes were open in the dark, unlike in love, trembling, lest in fear you'd let me go, amazed, right? So here in these lines, you see the hesitancy and impatience involved with the intimate and sexual act of marital, marital uh, intercourse, which have been portrait by Fernando, right? And then he continues on to say, 
Three months, the monsoon thrashed the sea and you remained at home. The sky cracked like a shell in thunder and rain broke through. Uh, so throughout these stanzas, we see uh, Fernando talking about the stages uh, which a conventional marriage uh, among the fisher community or among the fisher folk, how it goes uh, through, right? And the reason why earlier I was talking about generalization is because you do not really see a name given to this fisher woman or the fisher man. And if, when there are no names given to these characters, we know that there is a tendency for generalization, uh, an idea which is evoked that we can look at this as a generalization or like a, a generalized representation of the fisher folk, of the lives of fisher folk. Right. But then again, like when that is the case, I have talked about the dangers uh, of generalization before in this lecture, in the same lecture. Right. So that danger is uh, that danger is always there whenever there are generalizations made. So coming back to the third sensor um, here, when he's talking about the girls returning new plumed and wild, when our new when our wind torn flamboyant new buds broke and I was with child. So here you see uh, the reference to the act of making love that is interlinked with that of nature, right? So you see that uh, throughout this particular stanza, there are references to natural phenomena which are interlinked with human life, which are interlinked with the, the biological intercourse of human life when new buds broke and I was with child. And then the passionate encounter between the fisherman and the fisherman uh, when he is unable to go to the sea, when thunder and lightning is breaking through, right? That interlink and interconnection with nature, nature can be very obviously seen. And these are all examples of pathetic fallacy that we can see in Patrick Fernando's poetry, right? And uh, throughout this poem, whenever the fisherwoman is talking about the past, you are given this nostalgic recollection of memories of the past. And these are all given through this first hand point of view of the Fisher woman to kind of uh, maybe the, the reason why the first hand point of view is used is to deliberately make an impact, maybe to like, uh, maybe to like include more authenticity to this representation, right? So that is something we can interpret. And then um, when she's with child, now she's telling her husband uh, what happened, right? So that is in the next tense. My face was vain while uh, telling you and your voice fell low and you seemed full of guilt and not to know whether to repent or to rejoice over the situation, right? So this is because uh, according to Fernando, uh, the fisherman's life, it is filled with uh, unpredictable situations and scenarios and uncertainties. So it, he's not really sure whether she should be happy and she, that is the same with her, right? And um, you nodded to the ground and went to sea, but soon I was to you more than gold or temptation. And so you were to me. Um, so you see the emotions and feelings of grief, which are uh, expressed by Fernando uh, in the next, uh, in this stanza, as well as especially in the next stanza, right? The next stanza, which we haven't read yet. So these emotions, they come across in a very powerful and poignant manner through this vantage point of the Fisher woman, right? And also um, we see that there is an understanding, uh, understanding, uh, about God as well in this poem, right? Because God comes across as very predominant, as a very predominant and overarching presence among the coastal community culture within this coastal community culture, according to Fernando. So in this poem, you see how important God is to the community and particularly when it comes to a dangerous and unpredictable profession, which is filled with uncertainties like the profession of the bishop folk. And uh, this becomes very predominant with this line in the poem, which says, but soon 
I was to you more than God or temptation, right? This uh, overarching presence of God in their lives becomes evident, uh, particularly in this line. And then in the next uh, few lines, he continues to say, uh, men come and go and some say they understand. So now it's at the funeral, right? The funeral of the fisherman. fisherman. Uh, our children weep and the youngest think you, you're fast asleep. So the youngest thinking that he's fast asleep uh, kind of emphasize and accentuate uh, the innocence and naivety uh, and age of his child, right? Who is evidently uh, very young to think that her father, the father is asleep. You have grown so familiar as my hand. So there's a very powerful, powerful metaphor which is uh, incorporated by Patrick Fernando here, right? To convey how these two individuals have grown to be so interdependent, right? It's like losing a hand to her, which also emphasizes uh, the role the fisherman has played in this marriage, right? He has been the breadwinner of the family. And now that the breadwinner of the family is lost, uh, the fisherwoman and her children are in a very vulnerable situation. So you see to what extent that vulnerability has been emphasized uh, by Patrick Fernando. But the danger of this is, of course, generalization. And because this vulnerability is given in a manner in which this patriarchal dimension that can be seen in this poem is uh, emphasized even more, has been appropriated, right? OK. Um, so also, apart from that, you see philosophical concerns which have been uh, implicated or which have been discussed in this poem such as the references of uh, the inevitability of death, right? When he talks about the uncertainties, the unpredictable life of this profession, and also when um, the fisherman dies, that all emphasize the inevitability of death, which is a philosophical concern. And also how grief is very deeply private and personal has also been elaborated in this poem by Patrick Fernando, right? And um, then he, she continues on to say, uh, once more, the flamboyant is strong. The sky cracks like a shell. So someone practical has gone to make them bring the hearse before the rain. So here you see the reiteration of the natural process, right? Uh, when the flamboyant, um, when the flamboyant is torn and the sky cracks like a shell again, this is something which has already happened. This is the same natural phenomena which has happened earlier when uh, the fisherwoman and the fisherman was young and uh, were passionate and were in love. Just like that, even after the fisherman's death, this natural phenomena continues, right? So you see, therefore, the reiteration of the natural process uh, to that of human life, right? Uh, but in a completely different situation, right? Because now you see the sky cracking and the flamboyant is shown after uh, the death of the fisherman. So you see the grief, which is, in, which is emphasized more rather than in the previous section where you see it is life, which is emphasized more, right? So earlier, like uh, there was no hope of a child being alive and now there is only death when the flamboyant is torn and sky cracks like a shell. So this natural phenomena and the natural process is reiterated and uh, it's interconnected with human life to convey uh, a binary, two binary images, right? And these two binary images are opposing elements or are contrasting elements because one instance it indicated death, and in the second instance, sorry, one instance it indicated life, and in the second instance it indicated death, right? So you see um, images of nature are used to uh, emphasize the vulnerability of the fisherwoman as well, right? And her children who have, who have to depend on the fisherman. So again, as I said earlier, it conveys a very patriarchal ideology, which can also be problematic because it is basically saying that he is uh, emphasizing the helplessness uh, of the fisherwoman, right? So once the fisherman is gone, she becomes helpless. She becomes very vulnerable. That is emphasized 
again and again in this poem. And apart from that, this interconnection with uh, human life and nature and natural phenomena, uh, as well as uh, the bird imagery uh, can also be like references to pathetic fallacy that you can see in this poem. And in also we can see instances of pathetic fallacy when he intertwines or interconnects such human, uh, such life, the human lives and their practices with that of nature to emphasize binary scenarios or like binary visual images such as life in the first instance and life in the first instance and death in the next instance. Um, so these binary images, this usage of binary images, particularly life and death, uh, is something we can see in Patrick Fernando's poetry as well. We can see it in this poem, and also we can see it predominantly in another poem as well, in Life and Death of a Folk, which is also included in this uh, list of poems, Life and Death of a Folk by Patrick Fernando. And that is the place we are going to stop our first lecture. And in our next lecture, we'll um, quickly go through the other two poems by Patrick Fernando as well, so that you can make intertextual references with relation to this poem. Uh, and that will also help you in your analysis of this poem. And after that, uh, we will go to the poem uh, by Richard de Soisa. So thank you very much for your uh, Thank you so much for listening for this lecture uh, and I will meet you again in our next lecture.